The world is full of mysteries. From cryptids and monsters to ghosts and spirits. From mysterious locations to lost treasures. But the biggest mystery is our existence itself. How we came to this planet. What is the mystery of time? When the planet was born and when it is going to end. Are we living in the end times? Is end really close? Are we going to see the world ending in our generation? The answer may be hidden in the secrets of alchemy. In today's episode, we are going to unveil the secrets of end times. So watch the episode till the end. Many people may ask what is alchemy? Alchemy is a mysterious process conducted by our ancestors. This is a science that observes nature and also attempts to unveil the mysteries of nature. It is not just about transmuting lead into gold with some secret process. It is also about the mysteries of our own existence. In this episode our main focus will be upon uncovering the mystery of time and the cycle of ages with the help of alchemy. From Plato to Pythagoras, ancient Egyptians to other traditions, our ancestors knew this secret. Our research begins with a strange book called The Mysteries of the Cathedral, written by a man with strange name Fulcanelli. This book do not discuss the architecture of Gothic cathedrals but it is mostly about the magical science of alchemy. Before reading the book, the picture of alchemy in my mind was some old men working in secret, trying to turn lead into gold in order to get rich quickly. But I discovered alchemy is much much more than it appears to be. What Fulcanelli was trying to say through this book is, the secrets of alchemy was embedded in the arts and architecture of Gothic cathedrals. These cathedrals were built from 1100s to 1200s in Europe. Each cathedral took 7, 80 or 100 years to build and involved thousands of workers including the masons. According to Fulcanelli the cathedrals were built by alchemists and cathedrals themselves were alchemical experiments for drawing down the forces of spirit under the walls. The Mysteries of the Cathedral was first published in 1926 when only 300 copies of the book was sold to elites. But in 1957, the book was reprinted in mass, and this new edition included a new mysterious chapter called The Cyclic Cross of Hende. By reading it we can understand that Fulcanelli inserted the chapter later on purpose. 1926 was not the right time to reveal such information among masses, because this new chapter talks about an upcoming real catastrophe and this age is going to end. The Cross of Hende is a sacred cross structure built in Hende, France. The cross sits in the churchyard of St. Vincent's Cathedral. This cross looks unusual. It is about 12 feet tall. The four sides of the pedestal have carved drawings on each side. There is a fairy tale moon on the north side, star on the east side, carving of an angry faced sun with four stars on west side, and there is an oval shaped structure with cross inside with four eggs, with strange odd looking crossbars. This is the symbol of Freemasonry, as Fulcanelli tells us that the cross of Hende was carved by a Freemason. On the top of the pedestal is a Greek column with a secret inscription. This strange inscription means in Latin, Hail O Cross the Only Hope. On the other side it read, INRI, meaning Jesus of Nazareth King of Jews. According to Fulcanelli, the cross of Hende is the rarest symbolical translation of Chiliasm. Chiliasm is the ancient master doctrine related to the end of the world. Someone with such vast knowledge like Fulcanelli, telling us that the cross of Hende is the rarest symbolical translation of Chiliasm, it is extremely important. It simply means that the cross of Hende can reveal one of the biggest secret when the world is going to end. If we closely look at the Latin inscription it reads Ocrixaves Pesunica which appears like a mistake because it should be Ocrixaves Pesunica, which means Halo Cross the Only Hope. With such perfection in geometry it is hard to believe that a mason could commit such a blunder in inscription. Also the 2s looks like bending forward. But the truth is, this was a mistake put on purpose. The curved s has its esoteric meaning which shows the track path of sun, having arrived at zenith of its curved across space, at the time of cyclic catastrophe. It is the theoretical image of the dragon of apocalypse, which breathed fire on the day of judgment and the creation. In the chapter, Fulcanelli is talking about a promised land, where catastrophe cannot reach. And the other side of the cross INRI, gives meaning to the cross, by fire nature is renewed whole, as through the power of fire. Gold is separated from impure metals. According to scriptures, good will be separated from bad and evil at the time of judgment. Now Fulcanelli focuses on the spiral with four symbols. 
According to him it is the complete hieroglyph of cosmos. We can see it is closely related to the Day of Judgment, as the four sides of the pedestal looks like tarot cards. Card number 17 in tarot deck is the star, which is also eight-pointed just as the star of pedestal. Card number 18 is the moon, the side profile of the fairy tale moon just as we see in pedestal. Number 19 in the deck is the angry sun with 16 rays, similar to the one in pedestal. Card number 20 is the day of judgment, where an angel is holding a cross similar to the one in pedestal sphere. Strangely enough, there are two X's in pedestal that means number 20. So the four sides of the pedestal is pointing towards four ages or yugas. The Golden Age, Silver Age, Bronze Age and the Iron Age and then the Day of Judgment. The Iron Age has no other hieroglyph than that of death. The letters I and R I if translated to Hebrew gives us a number to play with. I is Yod, N is Nun, R is Resh and I is Yod again. Now the numerical equivalents of those letters are Yod is 10, Nun is 50, Resh is 200 and Yod is 10. Adding these four gives us 270. The sphere with four strange A's is talking about the precision of the equinox, which happens every 26,000 years. This 26,000 years period is divided into 12 parts. Each part is 2,160 years long. 270 multiplied by 8 is 2160. 8 is the predominant number in the architecture of the cross of Hende. Most people are not aware that the stars are not fixed. The Earth is not rotating in perfect circle. It is tilted 23 and a half degree. This tilt causes seasons. This tilt creates a wobble, and it takes 26,000 years to complete a full wobble precision. Now the stars are moving slowly, passing through each zodiacal month taking 2160 years. Now as the zodiacal clock moves, the Earth goes to great changes. Now if we place zodiacal chart in clock, 12 o'clock will be Aquarius, 3 o'clock will be Taurus, 6 o'clock will be Leo, and 9 o'clock will be Scorpio. These are the four major signs in the vision of Ezekiel. In the same chapter Fulcanelli mentioned the word double catastrophe many times, which is worth noting down. Now coming back to the Latin inscription, if we note it down on paper and separate the X, it turns out to be four different words. Now according to Fulcanelli's instructions if we arrange the four words it comes out, Cusco, Peru, Cave and Inca. Now Fulcanelli also talks about a place, a country where life can find refuge. In those four words we find a country Peru. Did Fulcanelli meant hail to the cross of Urcos? In the world map we can find out, a town named Urcos, which is just 20 miles away from Cusco, Peru. There is a story of a man who traveled to Peru named Aya. He had a drawing which looks exactly similar which he called the secret of the Incas. Inca is one of the four words we found out. The drawing had sun, star, moon and the shaped hill with tunnels in it. Now there is incredible legend in Peru about a tunnel system which ran through the Andes Mount. It was built by humans thousands of years before. Locals says that Inca had hidden golden treasures inside those tunnels. Some astrologers already found out the cosmic relationship between cross and stars. The Scorpio and Taurus line would be at right angles to the line of the procession. This cross only happens every 13,000 years, and it already appeared before 13,000 years. So now is the time of double catastrophe. Now this great cross is going to happen in near future. Nobody can accurately point out the exact year as in the vast cycle of 26,000 years. 10 or 20 years does not make much difference. Although the year cannot be predicted but this is the season of the end times. Maybe, the end of M Mayan calendar did not meant the end of the world. Instead they meant the end times season starting from 2012. Most of the people believe that it is a 20 years period starting from 2012 which ends in 2032. Now the question arrives, how the sun ends the world? The answer may be hidden in Dr. Paul Laviolette's book, Earth Under Fire. Dr. Laviolette describes how Sagittarius the Bowman and Scorpion both points at the center of our galaxy. The book also discusses how every 26,000 years, the Arctic region brings out the layer of iridium, which is a very rare mineral. This mineral somehow blows out in the surface every 26,000 years. When we look at our galaxy, we see bright light orbs, which we call white holes. Photographs of these white holes were taken and then the light was toned down. It revealed the structure of a galaxy. This simply means that all the white holes were actually galaxy. The center of those galaxy exploded which turned them into white holes. It seems like a periodic cycle of explosion, from which every galaxy goes through. 
That is the reason why Ancestors pictures Bowman pointing its arrow and Scorpion pointing its sting in the center of the galaxy, as the explosion takes place from the center. La Violette points out when the center explodes, a huge wave of energy burst outwards containing the dust of iridium and rhodium. This shockwave causes huge earthquakes and high winds in Earth. The dust covers the whole atmosphere and the sun. During this time the sun appears black and moon appears red, which is the sign of end-time prophecies in many traditions. When the dust particles covers the entire sun, it causes heat and pressure, and then the sun bursts out huge solar flares destroying all the surrounding planets including Earth. Remember the pedestal angry sun. It is the symbol of dust covering the sun, and sun is getting angry. And this is the reason why the mason put star opposite the sun, because the center of the galaxy is sun behind the sun. This may not be the last year, but we are surely living in the end of the end times. This is the end of today's episode. Please share your views about the end times below. Also share and like the episode to support us. I will see you soon with another mystical episode. Take care.